What's going on, you all? My name is Darren Rowan, and I'm a storytelling coach. But more importantly, I was also a king in chapter two of the King series. Now we're in the chapter three, and I am blessed to be your ambassador. Listen, you do not want to miss one episode of chapter three, because we know how Cal is. He's going to bring the fire, the passion, and the energy to each and every episode. Chapter three, King series. Let's Go on today, man. As you know, it's Kyle Jacko checking in from the ATL, man. I hope you're having a beautiful, blessed day or night whenever you see this video. Man, before we get ready to get started, you know we got to shout out the King Series Chapter 1. Y'all blessed the whole King Series. Then the King Series Chapter 2, y'all bum rushed the whole King Series. Then the King Series Chapter 3, I don't know y'all about to explode the whole entire King Series. Because y'all paving the way for the King Series Chapter 4. Man, I got somebody coming to me right now that I heard him on Clubhouse. Then I saw him on Instagram. And then one thing I thought about, man, and we got something to comment, because I don't know, I love video game. Like, I really love video game. Like, Madden, hey, you want to you wanna test your skills out of Madden? Come play with your boy. You know what I'm saying? You want to test your skills out of Mortal Kombat? Come play with your boy. You want to test your skills out of Call of Duty? Come play with your boy, man. We good. We got controllers everywhere. I will show y'all my controller, but then, you know, I got to show you how everything looks. I don't want to have to hurt nobody right here. But this king right here, he does a lot of great stuff. We're not just not playing video games, actually designing and doing a whole lot of stuff with video games. You're going to love it, so to all of you right now, this video is specially made for you because I know you like playing video games. I know you like playing online, everything like that. So what I did was I got you a king that could talk your type of language right now. With that being said, Brother Mark, come up here and speak to the kings and the kings and queens. Let them know, man, what you do. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Mark speaking. Yeah, so I'm actually the CEO of a gaming company called Next Wave Gaming. We actually launched last year in January 21. Um, basically, I wanted to start something that I knew I loved, I had a passion for. Uh, and not just me, there are a lot of people all over the world that love to play video games, all types of individuals like streamers or even the esports athletes. And I kind of wanted to be a part of that. Um, I joined the community on Discord, Instagram, YouTube, everything, just trying to create content. And what I do basically is I sell video game accessories as well as host events for all types of gamers, whether you like something more physical, like maybe just dance or something highly competitive like Tekken or Madden or 2K, you know. Um, that's a little bit about me. Um, you want to take it from there? Okay, cool. Well, you understand what I'm telling you right now. That's going to be the person you need to reach out to. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to play Madden and get beat, you know what I'm saying? With these Dallas Cowboys, come holler at you, boy. You want to get on Call of Duty, come holler at you, boy. Man, we good. We doing a lot of stuff over here. I promise y'all take it easy on you. Nah, I'm really not. But, King, the next question is, how do you wear your crown? as being a king in society around other kings? How do you wear it? How do I wear my crown? That's an intriguing question. I'd like to think I wear it very proudly um, in everything I do, anything from academics to my work life, try to keep a nice balance, of course. Um, people look up to me, a lot of people look up to me as far as in the medical industry, I also do um, part-time technician work. Um, a lot of people come to me for advice when they're not sure something is going right. And there's also a, another aspect to it, you know, being a black man in America, it seems like there's a unrelenting pressure pushing against your back always constantly. And I feel there are other ways to, to, to relieve that pressure than the typical, you know, rapper, gang violence, and drugs, all those methods. I feel like there are more positive aspects as far as, you know, meditation. Maybe I wanna read or write a book Maybe I want to go to a social event, you know? Okay, I love that. I love it. Because, yes, you have to do something else with your time than the negative. Okay, my next one. Who would you consider to be your king role model? Like, for me, my king role model, the first one is Malcolm X. It's Malcolm X because it was three different signs of Malcolm X. He was changing up every time. When he was out there in the streets, he was Detroit Red. After Detroit Red, then he went to, went to jail and became a Muslim changed that culture. Then he went to Mecca, came back, and he was his mind was just totally different. He was like, all white people don't hate us. 
it's only some that hate us. And the ones that love us, I'm gonna treat them some different. So that's one of them. And then my other one has to be my pastor, Dr. Kern B. Lee. It's my pastor, Dr. Kern B. Lee, because um, he saw greatness inside of me when I see greatness inside of myself. So with you, King, it could be a celebrity, it could be a family member, it could be somebody you work with. Who is your King model? Let us know their name and let us know why they're your King role model. Yes, that's a great, great question. Okay. Um, when I really think about it, I would say my King role model would have to be the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. The reason I say Marcus Messiah Garvey is because he's a revolutionary. He's a brilliant strategist. He's a general. He's many things. But above all, he's Pan-Africanist. And basically, he wants us to come together as a people to overthrow our oppressors, to build for ourselves, and to give it to our children, to keep it in the family, basically. I, I respect a lot of his, his um, words and principles and, about life and about the Pan-Africanist uh, movement. And I think he inspires me greatly. Um, another great king will have to be my father. You know, he's influenced my life. He's instilled discipline into me. And he's the reason why I get up in the morning. He's my drive. You know, he's, he's the king. He's, he's it. Okay, okay. What's your dad's name, man, if you don't mind? I'll say your dad's name right if you don't mind. Yes, uh, Mr. Mark Prosper Sr. Okay. So, yeah, so you the gym leader say, okay, then, cool. Shout out to your pop man over everything going good, man. You are raised, you are raising, I would say raised, you're still raising a strong, amazing king, man. It was an honor to see him on Clubhouse doing everything he's doing, see everything else he's doing, too. So, shout out to you, man. Thank you for making this amazing king right here. And if y'all don't know, man, it's time for the wordplay. The wordplay is something I created because this wordplay, I want to stump some of these kings because, see, they don't know what, what I'm gonna say. They don't know it at all. So I say, you know what? Let me change something up. Let me do something called a wordplay. We're gonna have fun with it. So King, unmute your microphone. What we gonna do is we're gonna go ping pong style. We're gonna have a good time with it. So unmute your microphone. Let's go ahead and play it. Since you like games so much, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna tell you a name of a game and I want you to tell me what is the good things about that game and what's the bad things about that game. Cool. All right. All right, your first game is gonna be, you know we gotta go to Madden. When I say Madden. What's up with that, man? Give me the good, give me the bad. Madden, okay. Highly competitive. Uh, if you're talking online, very, very destructive. Uh, <laughs> it's like that with most competitive games, but with Madden, um, it has a lot to do with strategy, I would think. Definitely, definitely. Okay. I'm going to give you another one of my favorites. We're going to give you more of the combat. What you think about that? Oh, more of the combat. Very, very competitive. Um, takes a lot of brain power to figure out the combos. A lot of technique goes into Mortal Kombat. Um, you have to have creativity and imagination when playing a game like that, because the combos, they seem limited, but they're really infinite. And it's a great game to have with friends on a nice Friday or Saturday night, definitely. What is the bad thing about Mortal Kombat? The bad thing is, you know, if, you know, the rating, if you don't like a lot of blood and gore, it's just not the game for you. Um, at times it gets so highly competitive that it may get very verbal in, in the chats, you know? Facts, facts. You ain't lying about that one. Okay. So I gave that one. I'm gonna give you another one. Um, I'm gonna do taking. So we talked about that beforehand. Taking, give me the good and the bad about taking. All right. So for taking that one, you have to have skill. Being a beginner player going against even a medium or high ranking player is gonna be very difficult for you. You have to have technique, you have to have skills, you have to have some knowledge of how the game, the, the game base works. Um, assuming it's like Mortal Kombat is not gonna have, it's not gonna help you at all, not at all. Um, the layout is completely different. Um, some of the good aspects are, it definitely builds um, cognitive abilities um, hand-eye coordination, some of the bad aspects about it is, again, it gets highly competitive, but if you love the characters and the designs, it's, it's worth the gameplay, honestly. Okay, yeah, don't, and I'll be trying to tell you, don't think taking is like Mortal Kombat, because it's truly, I see on Mortal Kombat, and it goes out to all the women. Y'all just press all the buttons, and that's what happens. You press all the buttons on taking, you're going to get beat every single game. It's not going to work. 
So yeah, you keep on pressing all the buttons you want to. Not as a matter of fact, not even to the women, because they got some men out there too. They press all the buttons too. It doesn't work the same way. My next one is gonna be Call of Duty. But you got about said, tell me the good, tell me the bad. So about which one is that? Call of Duty. Call of Duty, okay. The thing I love about Call of Duty is that there are so many. Um, if you feel like one game is not for you, try another one. If you don't like Vanguard, try World of War. If you don't like World of War, try Infinite Warfare. Um, the aspects I love of Call of Duty is you get to play against other players online, um, which helps to build, uh, which helps with team building and as far as well world building as well. It has a very realistic aspect to it. Of course, when you're working, when you're playing a game with uh, any type of firearm, there has to be some type of discipline, regardless of if it's a game or not. You know, you're gonna get your teammates out there killed. Um, I love the the part where they have the zombies can, you know, that lets you, um, that lets your imagination really run wild and gives you a chance to see what you would do in that kind of zombie apocalyptic scenario. Um, the thing I hate about Call of Duty is it's, the chats get very, very verbal. Um, they can get kind of aggressive in chats with all types of, you know, slurs and hate words, but um, they definitely updated that. They fixed some issues with that. Um, another aspect I don't like about Call of Duty is that although there are lots of variations to the game, you know, it seems kind of repetitive and, you know, you're always looking for something new and interesting. Okay. I just want to let y'all know something, man. Whenever y'all are ready, you know, I don't have a PS5. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got these. The only thing I got right now, these sticks. Y'all ready? Let me know. Y'all can get on this online matchup when we good to go. I don't do no holidays. Ain't no grown man come kidding with me and playing. I don't let little kids play. My little, my little boy don't play the game. But that's how bad. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take you on a journey right quick. My little boy wanted to play more of the combat one time. My little boy wanted to play more of the combat. I think he was like, like seven at the time. He was like seven. I was like, man, we're gonna play because we get ready. I was ready to take him home. The mom wasn't home yet. So we played, played one time. Beat my little boy in in more of combat like by three, four times. Hey, bro, he beat me one time. Bro, we didn't leave that house until ten o'clock at night. He was like, Dad, I'm ready to go home. No. You, no, you're not gonna do it because you already know. You you a little look, look, your dad older you, you already know. You beat your dad one time, you don't think you beat him every time. I want to make sure he know that he can't beat me ever again. He stayed with me until 10 o'clock at night. By the time he went home, he was late going to school the next day. Cause he didn't he couldn't just beat me like that. But man, you have won the wordplay, man. Do you wanna know what you have won? What? Man, we got you 20 biscuits from Popeyes. No oh. butter, no water. No tea, no salt and pepper. You can't use nothing, but you got to eat all the biscuits in four minutes. 20 of them. Oh, shoot. Really? Yeah. You receive that? I think I can do it. Okay, this might be his last time being on the King Series right now because he's not going to have no water, no nothing. I don't know how he's going to make it. He says he's going to make it. And I got one more gift for you, man. Um, Probably in August, you're going to get a package that's going to come to your house in August. When this package comes to your house, it's gonna be black and gonna, it's gonna be all it's gonna be all black pockets package. We're gonna have a checky doll inside. So what I require you to do is when you take the checky doll out, make sure all your lights are on, cut off none of your lights, because I don't know what check is gonna do in your house, but I don't think it's gonna be anything great. Awesome. That sounds amazing. You can tell he's very young. He just took the checky doll, didn't even care what's gonna happen when you took it. Yes. That's what you call being young and just going out there and living life. But with that being said, man, I have to get ready to go to my next part of this video, man. And it's something that um, I love doing it because um, it brings back so many memories. And I love doing it also because these kings, they get ready to talk about my uncle Eddie Ray Brown. So when they watch the video, I don't know what they're going to say because we don't talk about this. I just wanted it to be, it's, it's going to be amazing to me what they're going to say. I'm watching just like y'all watching right now. So, King. And this blueprint that you had, had a man on that call, Eddie Ray Brown, King Series, King Chapter 1, Series 15, looking at you like this. King, let everybody know what you got from that video and let people know why they should watch that video, King. Oh, man. That video was really, really powerful. Um, let me take my time. After watching that video initially, my thoughts were, Mr. Mr. Eddie Brown, he... He truly lived a genuine lifestyle. He was a loving father, a caring friend, and a great mentor from what, I, what I've seen. 
his attitude towards life was just outstanding, you know, very brilliant. Um, all throughout the video, if, from my understanding, he emphasizes the importance of, of you know, loving hard and, and, and being very disciplined. Um, his teachings were, you know, they felt like they really connect with the younger kings. You know, I feel like I connected more with those video. Um, and he was emphasizing the importance of, you know, his life being over in overtime from his, his um, terminal illness and just making sure he lived the most he could and doing absolutely everything in his power to live a most enjoyable lifestyle for not just himself, but also for his friends and family. Okay, man, I love, I love that. Like I tell people, like I don't know what they, I don't know what they're gonna say when they watch it, but he hit everything on right down on the other head. You know what I'm saying? And um, my uncle was always somebody went out to the youth, and he done a boxing gym, and he worked at a barbershop, couldn't have from youth, and had drives and their toy drive for the kids, and he always done so much great things, man. I'm telling you right now, I hope for my life I can do half of the stuff that my uncle Eddie Ray Brown did. So, man, this King Series video, along with all the rest of them, this is the logo. This is about and the reason why the lines are all different colors, because no king is the same. But that crown up there, God keeps everything where it needs to be. So you can be a different king, but you all got to go right back to God. So thank you so much for that, man. My next question to you is, what are you doing right now in your community to develop kings for the future? Uh, yes, it's great that you asked that. Um, recently, I've started working more um, with agriculture and the garden. So actually, me and my brothers and a couple of other friends in our community, I'm trying to gather our young kings to to build something that they can have for themselves and for their family. We've actually more recently done an aquaponics setup uh, project where basically we create tankers to hold um, fish while doing a sort of garden on the top for vegetables like tomatoes, basil, and other various herbs like thyme or, or mint. And it's a really cool project. It's a great way to help out the community. You know, it teaches them the, the not only fish and farm for themselves, it teaches them how to work together with others to create something very, very beautiful. Okay, King, man, I like that, man. Like, I can't even lie, man, growing up, we ain't have stuff like that. Like I say, man, y'all generation have them. A lot of great stuff because man i remember the last time i remember when i was little i think we had the little small goldfish we had no big one. and i tried to get a goldfish and i had them we didn't live that long somebody didn't tell me that you can't keep on feeding goldfish like you feed a pit bull and i used to always feed all uh, you feed them so much and one day i came home yeah you know, he was right up there at the top and it was goldie goldie didn't make it that long and yeah he didn't make it that long at all y'all can't see his face he couldn't make it that long i ended up going to one of my friends house and man, they had like a big aquarium. That's my first time I ever seen the aquarium as a little kid. I think I was like five, six years old. It was a big aquarium. But he had piranhas in his aquarium. And his dad loved piranhas. And yeah, his daddy was like, yeah, whatever you do, don't put your hand in there. I was like, man, what you talking about? I got a fish at home named Goldie. And that before Goldie passed away. And he said, I'm gonna show you why. He took a steak and he put it, he put it inside the tank. Had like three, four piranhas in there. Steak didn't even do a chance. Then he put a bone in there. They broke the bone in half, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, whoa. So that was my first ever seeing that. So that's a great thing. Now, my next question is going to be real good to ask you this question because you're still you. You're still, you're still considered you, regardless. But what do you see in mainstream society right now that's sending out the wrong king message pretty much to y'all? Yes, yeah, much as I know I'll get hate from this, uh, it would have to go to those young rappers out there. They really aren't spreading a good message. It's, it's really bad. And I think it involves a lot of the, not even just my generation, but the even younger generations are being involved in the, in the gang violence and, and the scrutiny and the, in the just degradation of the black male and black woman in society. And it's just terrible, man. Um, I feel like the only way we can combat this is, is to change. And I know this is not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be simple. It's not gonna be right away, but to change the way we feel and think about music. It's it's gotta it's gotta go, man. Very amazing answer, man. Very amazing answer. I'm just sitting up here like, who raised this young brother? And I think about his dad. He already talked about his dad already, but I loved it. And I wasn't even expecting that for you. I don't know why. I wasn't even expecting that because 
you're still in their age realm. Like you're you're right there in their age realm, but to know the same thing, like as me as being older, I think the same thing too. So to know that you think that hopefully somebody watch this video that's in your age bracket actually feels about the same way and actually make a change to what they do. Like I tell them all the time, I listen to gospel music girl in the morning, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Wow. 12, 1 o'clock, I'm putting in Kevin Gates. I'm listening to Gates. I'm listening to Bootsy. I'm listening to everybody else. But at the same time, is when I'm listening to it, I am not about to go out there and take an AK-47 and spray up everybody in the block. Like, I'm not about to just do this. I, the game signs. I'm not about to do all that, man. I got too much other stuff to lose. So, let the youth know that you got to know this right here. Everything that you see on TV is TV. What's happening in your world, world right now, being there taking care of your mom, being there for your dad, being that strong brother, that strong sister, that cousin, that's what's really more valuable than anything else. And with that being said, I love this part of this video, though, man, because last year we had the motivational prayer. Thanks, thank you to God for this year, for the Queen's prayer. We had the Queen's prayer. This right here is the King's prayer. The King's prayer, the King is going to pray for y'all. He's going to pray for all the kings. Of, <coughs> excuse me. That's a part of this right here. This project, just the kings around this community, he's going to pray for everybody. So this is going to be a very great thing, man. So, King, go ahead and pray for your King. I'm about to sit about this camera right quick because I'm going to let bro do what he's doing. And once he get done, I'm going to come back, give him this last question. We're going to be good to go. But go ahead, King. You got the mic. All right. Um, it's probably one of my first times doing this. So let me start by saying thank you for our creator for giving us the energy and the life that we have today. Thank you for giving us our brothers and sisters who are there with us in the struggle. Thank you for giving us the food to nurture our bodies and the water to heal our bodies. I wanna give thanks to all the family we have that are there to support us in this moment and in the future as well. As Kings, we are seen as leaders. We are the ones in control. We are the ones with the power to change. This includes me and all the other kings in our nation. If I could say one thing, I would want us to pray for our future, for our success, for the next generation, for the generations before us to see what our accomplishments are and to see what we will accomplish in the future. I'm positive with the right attitude, we can lead this nation forward in a more positive manner in a manner in which we build for each other and lastly i would like to pray on behalf of all our queens as well you are the backbone of all of us you are the reason why we get up in the morning you're the reason why we see light in the day and i want all the queens to know we really really appreciate and love you and respect you shout out to all the kings love that amen had to let it sit in for a minute i want y'all to understand so it's never a right or wrong way to pray. Pray every way you want to. And that's why I love what he just showed you. He showed you he's still effective. He got in his own way. He's like the third or fourth king to pray with their eyes open. I have I don't know what it is, but they just love having their eyes open when they pray. But I don't know if they just in a bad neighborhood, they just want to make sure nobody steals their chains or something. I don't know what it is. You know, you never know what it could be. But man, very effective prayer. And right now, man, um, before I get to, to his last question. I want to tell y'all, man, this has been the King Series Chapter 3. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. You share this video to your friends, your family, your auntie, your cousin, your baby mama, baby daddy. Share it to the person that you see at the street. You share it to everybody. Tell them on this right up, you're going to get God and motivation. You're going to get Kings actually telling you what they do in their own life. And with that being said, King, what I want you to do is I want you to give a motivational message to the Kings and to the Queens of 2022. And when you get done, giving them that message, I want you to close it out in your own way. So basically what I'm telling all of y'all right now is, you're not gonna see the beautiful face again until another video comes out. Now I'm leaving you in great hands. This king right here is about to get ready to take you out for this video, remember this right here. I'm just a host, this is their video. King, you done a very amazing job, but man, King, I gotta go, man. I'm gonna let you go ahead handle it, all right? I'm gonna see y'all the next episode, okay? Take care, be blessed. Oh, definitely. My message to all the kings and queens out there, please, please remember, we must unite. We must be with each other in this moment right now and seize the opportunities that are out there. This opportunity for all of us to succeed and to thrive. 
Let's build churches, hospitals, whatever we need, banks, food stores, drug stores, whatever we need, we can do together. Um, and lastly, please respect all your healthcare workers. They are going through hell right now. And I just want you to know, I support our troops. I support our people. I love us and I want you to love us too. All right, peace.